Hello everyone and welcome to Destiny News in Review, Article Roundup Edition. Many, many articles and bits of information were thrown around all week and I'm here in an attempt to round up as much as humanly possible. If you're looking for my analysis on the gameplay itself, check out my previous video linked here. I cover a lot of things there that I probably won't cover here. For time's sake, I will not be listing every source to every piece of information because there are about 25 to 30 articles and videos as of the recording of this video, but rest assured that everything here consists of information from these sources. Links to all sources will be in the description. So we're going to start with the different foci in the game, along with abilities. We learn that Destiny will ship with access to two foci per class right off the bat, but there will be more foci to unlock during the rest of the game, we just don't really know anything about them yet. Each focus features different active and passive bonuses for you to choose from, and you can switch them around as much as you want. However, you eventually get the ability to lock in your focus, meaning you are not allowed to make any more changes. When you lock in your focus, you also get an additional stat boost and a copy of your focus. Remember, your focus acts like a piece of equipment. When you get this copy, it'll be completely blank and you'll need to re-level it to try a new build. But, this copy, and I assume all other copies, gain experience at a much faster rate than the original, so it won't take as long as the first. I wouldn't be surprised if this lock-in ability was on your armor or weapons as well. But if it is, I wouldn't expect to see copies of your guns and armor. Each focus has 8 levels of upgrades that you slowly unlock as you level. These upgrades vary from super ability and movement modifications to grenade types and I'm sure much more. Force was also a stat that we learned about which buffs your super ability in various ways. One example was reduced cooldown and I'm sure there's plenty more. It's important to note that you won't be able to change your focus mid-mission. You'll need to retreat back to safety in order to initiate a change of focus. Starting with the Titan, we've learned the names of the Titan's foci. The Striker Codex is the offensive starting focus, featuring Fist of Havoc. Expect to see many offensive traits within this focus tree. The defensive starting focus is called Defender Codex, featuring the shield ability that we've seen which is called Ward of Dawn although I've also seen it go by The Void and Void Barrier as well. Both skills can be adjusted to your liking. Examples of these adjustments for the shield include having it follow the player, having it buff teammates, or simply remaining a stationary heavy defense. The Hunter's Edgewalker focus features Arc Blade as the super ability, so maybe expect some abilities focused on melee or being sneakier. The Gunslinger focus, which I don't think is the official name yet, Features the Golden Gun as its super ability, and given the name Gunslinger, I'd expect a lot of skills tailored to pistol and sniper rifle usage. However, I didn't find any absolute confirmations of that. I do have a quote which supports this assumption from Tyson Green, lead investment designer. Quote, If you look at each force specification, you'll see there are a lot of abilities that synergize with the special powers. There are things that make you take less damage in melee range, things that make your sprint better, things that make your melee attacks feed into your grenades, and your grenades feed into your supers. It would be fair to say that the superpowers define each spec, but the abilities themselves are more of a holistic thing." End quote. We also saw the Hunter's throwing knife in action, along with their homing grenade. The Warlock's Order of the Void focus features Nova Bomb as its super ability. We saw a variation of Nova Bomb in the Strike gameplay where the Warlock throws three orbs. In the January podcast, Irk noted the complaints of other players over the large amount of Nova Bombs coming out from him, and he claimed that it wasn't Nova Bomb, but rather Axiom Bolt. Given that Bungie has chose to reveal only two of the foci per class, the ones that you start with, I'm thinking that Axiom Bolt is part of the Order of the Void focus, and the name is changed from Nova Bomb to Axiom Bolt should you choose to modify Nova Bomb in that way. However, that is just some speculation on my end. Order of the Sun is the focus that uses Radiance as its super, which unfortunately we did not get to see in the most recent gameplay. This focus is much more subtle and revolves around support based play and buffing allies. As for the movement skills that were elaborated on, each class gets their own unique double jump. The Titan has a jetpack, the Warlock has this parabolic glidey floaty effect, and the Hunter has more of the typical double jump you see in other games. These will be able to be upgraded in a variety of ways as well. One option that comes to mind is more height or hang time. 
The cooldown of the double jump is reset almost instantly after you touch the ground. Now if you didn't catch my analysis of the gameplay, we learned what orbs of light are. Your super is now charged by a meter which steadily increases. As for orbs of light, basically every time you use your super and deal damage with it, or buff allies presumably, or whatever other effects there might be, you will generate a few orbs of light. Your teammates can pick these up and increase their super meter by about 16-17% to 17 per orb. Working in tandem to continuously chain these orbs will prove quite fruitful in increasing your party's damage. Let's move on to currency, items, and loot. Glimmer is the currency in Destiny, and you'll use it for nearly everything, buying weapon upgrades, ability upgrades, stuff from vendors, and anything else that you might need to purchase. But for more advanced upgrades, you might need other items that will drop randomly from enemies, stuff like weapon kits that we saw back in E3, in addition to Glimmer. We didn't see those drop in the gameplay, but we saw that we could get them. We also learned about engrams, which are unidentified items that can be brought back to the tower for decryption for the cost of, I assume, some Glimmer. You can exchange them for weapons the decryptor already has, or you can gamble and have the decryptor decrypt your item, and you can see what you get. Each player gets a vault or bank, which they can use to store excess items. You can trade these items between your own characters, but trading with other players is not currently planned for launch. There is a lot of potential for abuse there, and they would like to test it more without breaking the game's economy, which I think is fair. There is no auction house either. However, you will be able to acquire weapons from vendors in the tower. So what's the deal with loot? Well, your loot will apparently be tailored to you, as in you'll be getting items that you need or fit your playstyle specifically. Smart loot, if you will. Loot can be found in a variety of places. Strikes, raids, public events, patrols, and even randomly out in the wild. And you'll be able to upgrade nearly everything that you earn. White and green quality items are on the lower end of rarity, and won't have as many options as some of the better, more rare loot. Some upgrades include damage, range, accuracy, stability, rate of fire, which are all fairly standard, but there are also things like control, will, and force, which, besides force, aren't really defined yet. Certain weapons can have elemental properties. These include thermal, arc, and void, so if you're prepared, perhaps you can take on certain enemies with specific elemental weaknesses. Armor can also be upgraded as well as vehicles. Loot is semi-randomized, at least with regards to treasure chests out in the wild. They won't spawn in the same place every time, nor will they have the same piece of loot every time, so trying to farm weapons via farming the same chest over and over is impossible. You'll also be given an audio cue when you're near some loot, just in case you need a little hint on finding its exact location. Finally, solo players will still be able to get the top tier loot in the game, it just might take a little bit longer compared to someone who is actively earning loot from raids. Now let's go to the kind of events you can expect in Destiny, and its gameplay. There's plenty to do. The campaign, patrols, public events, strikes, raids, PvP. But I want to touch on leveling just a little bit before I continue. Leveling apparently will be pretty painless in Destiny. Originally, a source claimed that it only took a few hours to reach max level. However, this was proven false by Deej. But Bungie didn't want leveling to max level to take an incredibly long time. They want players to be able to play with each other without having to worry about the grind to max level. Apparently, once you hit level 20, you're approaching an endgame state, but Bungie hasn't officially said what the max level is. Once you're at max level, the game is more about equipping the gear that lets you go deeper into the game. There are more strikes, there are raids, and there are higher levels of PvP if you equip better weapons and armor. Moving on. Patrols are essentially a free roam situation, where you just drop down into an area and do whatever you want. Sort of like Adventure Mode in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. You'll also be able to take on faction-specific missions while in a patrol. I know factions are something we haven't really heard about for a while. Quote, Factions will give you missions at the tower. You can also get new missions on the fly through communication spikes in the ground. They will have rewards for helping them out. They will have different story motivations, a different take on the world, and they add another layer of richness to Destiny." End quote. Public events, well, we know what those are. After a public event is completed, if you'd like, you can stick around in the same area and wait for something else to happen, which gives some sort of hope that we won't see the same public event in the same spot every single time. 
For the most part, public events happen in enemy areas. They will also have a limited amount of people in them. This isn't for any sort of technical reason, but mainly so every player feels like they're actually making an impact in the event, instead of just being in a sea of hundreds of people. Strikes are essentially the MMO equivalent of dungeons, but if you're an old school World of Warcraft player, they're a lot like the level 60 dungeons. Strikes won't strictly be linear, there will be plenty of room to explore. They're designed to be around 15 to 30 minutes long. They are instanced as well, meaning when you enter with a group, it's just you and your group and no other players. There will be matchmaking for strikes if you don't have a group though. You'll get paired up with others if you don't have your own group. Raids were shockingly enough kept under wraps. Yeah, I know Dato does destiny wants to know about raids. <laughs> we know that they will require six players. Irk revealed a couple of details on NeoGAF though. Raids contain puzzles that require the entire group to solve, and he also referenced the difficulty of them. Quote, Last time I played, we spent over 45 minutes just cracking the entrance. I don't know if the entrance is in reference to actually working your way towards the raid entrance, or if they were actually inside the raid at the time. Irk also said, on the topic of raids, Quote, Raids are a six-player activity that will always be in parties comprised of your friends. End quote. So it doesn't sound like there's any matchmaking with other players like you could do with a strike. Bungie is also keeping PvP under wraps until E3, but we did learn a couple of things. Firstly, you won't be able to just pop in the disc and immediately load up PvP. It will take, quote, a couple of hours tops in order to access PvP. The reason for this is because Bungie wants players to have at least one super ability and more than the basic guns that you get right off the bat. You can level to max level by only doing PvP, although it really didn't seem encouraged. It was mentioned that there will be 3v3 PvP arenas, but this is not the only size of multiplayer matches that will be available to us. Multiplayer will be available for play at E3, and I'll be at E3 to bring you all the facts. I'm going to finish off this recap with just some stuff that didn't really fit in any other category, and some stuff that we don't know. First off, we learned that the GameStop Sparrow pre-order bonus is in fact real. So if you ordered from GameStop, you should check with them to make sure you got grandfathered into this pre-order bonus. I'm not too sure how it works for pre-ordering online though. On the topic of Shrike vs Sparrow, Irk clarifies on NeoGAF. Quote, One of the Sparrows is called the Strike, but all Sparrows are Sparrows, and that was totally the plan all along. Winky face. I later learned that that winky face was indeed very important for context. You won't be experiencing much penalty for dying. There won't be any lost experience, no repair costs, no losing money because of death. The only penalty is that you can't help your teammates, and if your entire party dies, you'll have to go back to a checkpoint. The director is basically your guide in the world of Destiny. It'll tell you where everything is and what kind of events are happening in the world in a very easy to read way. Its aim is to let players jump into exactly what they want to be doing very quickly. You'll have a maximum of three character slots for now. Cross-platform saving of characters is confirmed. What this means is that, if you're playing on a PS3 and upgrade to a PS4, you'll be able to take your character with you. The same goes for Xbox 360 to Xbox One. Bungie is still toying with the idea of beta characters carrying over into the release. Quote, even if the beta guardian doesn't carry over, the guardians you make on day one will be your character for destiny. So you're in it for the long run. Personally, I'd like to see a level playing field upon release. Here's a few things that we don't know. Local split screen multiplayer. Don't know. Beta date? Don't know. Frames per second and resolution? Don't know. Can PS4 players play with PS3 or Xbox One with Xbox 360? Don't know. I think that's pretty unlikely. The last thing I want to point out for this video is probably one of the most inspiring things that I've read in regards to this game, and I'm just going to quote it directly. This is Bungie COO Pete Parsons. This is a real operation. We've got shifts that are working 12 hours a day, 7 days a week, and within a couple of weeks, there will be people operating our data operations center 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They'll never leave for the next 10 years. This is a whole team of people who work shifts, no matter what, because that's the kind of world we're building. But there will be something new to do every single day, and that's cool to think about from a planning perspective. 
We have the time to do it right. We have a programming chart which essentially says one thing. There is going to be something new to do every single day inside of Destiny from the moment players light it up for the first time. The fact that they're going so hardcore, so all in on this is really inspiring. I know the reception to this reveal was pretty lukewarm and met with a lot of meh from people not familiar with the game, but I think this statement really puts things in perspective into how big and how much stuff there will be in this freaking game. Anyway guys, that is gonna do it for me. I realize I probably forgot something, but I tried really hard to make sure I got the meat and potatoes of the information and I focused less on the salad. That also looked way more clever on the script than it sounded, but you guys know what I mean. So if there is something meat and potatoes that I missed, just drop a comment with what I missed and the source, and if it's something I think is crucial, I'll call myself a dum-dum and then add an annotation. But don't give me any salad. No salad. In my next video, I'll give my opinion on what we saw and learned and discuss why people who haven't been following the game are not so hyped at the moment. I'm on Twitter, at Dado's Destiny. I'm also on the Facebooks, facebook.com slash Destiny. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, a positive rating is greatly appreciated. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time. Um, Dalto does Destiny would like to know- Dalto does Destiny would like to know- Dalto does Destiny would like to know- Dalto does Destiny.